Hey, you honors, welcome back to another episode of Islander Robotics, where Tim will be showing all of you why linked lists are so amazing. My name is William McKean, and for those of you that are brand new to the channel, I'm an electrical engineer turned computer science, but everything you see on this channel, I taught myself using the same tools that you are all using right now, which is YouTube. So, with all that being said, why don't you hit that subscription button in the bottom corner if you have not yet done so, and sit back, relax with your favorite snack, and let's get started, shall we? I hope you all enjoyed that intro. I really want to try something different in today's video. Let me know down in the comment section down below on what you all thought about it. And so let's just get into really today's video. But before we actually do, I just want to say in no shape or form is today's video going to be a full tutorial on how to operate link lists. All right. As well as I know stock analysis tool is in the title of today's video, but in no shape or form is this video going to be financial advice. All right. With all that being said, why don't we start talking about why linked lists are so amazing as well as all of you. I know a lot of the, my viewers are Python developers that are just getting started. They're trying to use YouTube to learn how to actually develop in Python. Just like how I started off. I used YouTube throughout my, essentially the infancy of my Python career. And really no one really talked about linked list on any of the channels I was watching. It was not until I switched majors from electrical engineer to computer science that I learned about linked list. And they're really an amazing thing for two reasons. One reason is that if you want if you want programming to be your main gig, how you get paid, you should learn linked lists, how to create a linked list because that is probably one of the most common interview questions there is is they're going to give you a computer say create me a linked list and see how well you do at that. As well as linked lists are really the beginning for so many different higher up data structures. I mean, not just besides integers or floats or lists or dictionaries which I originally thought was the only data structures there were but link list is the foundations for a lot higher up more efficient data structures that you can use within your Python I mean your programming career all right so with all that being said what we're gonna actually do is I want to bring all of your attentions to the whiteboard right behind me and really what this whiteboard is supposed to represent is the memory inside your computer a link list is a it's a very strange data structure. It's not like a dictionary or a list or a really an integer or float. Really how a linked a linked list is is that you have pieces of data considered that are considered nodes. So right here, this is considered one node right here. And inside of that linked list for demonstration purposes and explaining what a linked list is we're only going to have one piece of data but you'll see in today's video you can actually store multiple pieces of data within one single linked list as long as you have one part of your node that's considered the next all right and what is the next well the next is going to be storing the next node inside of your linked list so for instance we're going to take this as we're going to take this linked list, the very first cell a node of our linked list, also known as the head of our linked list, and we're going to store, let's just say, tw 21 inside of the data. All right. Now, when we add another node, what the next is actually doing is storing the memory address of the next node. So let's just say we want, we're going to store our data right here. Notice how we didn't store the data right underneath, like right here. We store the data in this cell right here. That's because that's really what makes a linked list so efficient is that the nodes can be sporadic, can be all over your memory inside your computer. And really it makes you this makes linked list so much more efficient than any other piece of data. All right. And what's going on? I, I just got a little sidetracked real quick. I'm sorry. But what's going on inside of the next is actually we're storing the memory address of the next node inside of our linked list. So this next is going to store the memory address of this node. All right, so the head's going to point to the, well, in our circumstance right now, this node right here is considered the tail, all right? And the reason why this is called a tail, there are multiple different types of um, linked lists out there, but what we're gonna be working with in today's video is actually called a singly linked list, all right? And what makes a singly linked list different than any other linked list is that you're only, you have a head and a tail, all right? And there's only one path. And the one path is what's 
connecting the necks to each other, right? I know this is very, very complicated. Trust me, when we get into the coding section, it'll make a lot more sense. And why don't we actually just switch over to the coding section and we're gonna start off with probably the most crucial aspect of a linked list, the node, where we're going to be storing all the data that we want this linked list to be storing. All right, so over here on line one, we're just creating a just class node and then we're actually creating all you really have to have inside of the node class is the initializer for your for your class for your node and in our circumstance we're not only going to be having a next being defined as well as we're going to be having a price current percentage overall percentage and the symbol for that stock really what you're all going to be noticing is that we're going to be sending each one of these variables equal to none reason being is there's actually a couple of reasons one one way we're going to be able to do it is well one reason why we have this is so that we're able to define when the linked list has ended as well as we're just saying that inside of this linked list inside of this certain aspect of next there's nothing beyond it inside of the price there is none uh and so forth and so forth i mean so on and so on and really that's all that's going on after that it's just really the same as what you would do with a normal class inside of python where you're setting these variables equal to some sort of self variable for that class the real fun aspect of a linked list is actually going to be the next part which is where we actually get to start going into the linked list over here on line 10 oh i scrolled up over here on line 10 is where the linked list is starting to be created. And before we can actually start creating methods for this linked list, we have to define a few initializers for this class. Really being, we have to define a self.head, which is going to be the head of our linked list. And we're gonna set that equal to none for the time being. We don't want that set equal to anything because remember, that's really just going to be associated with a place in memory inside of our computer. And then we're also defining a self.tail and we're going to set it equal to none for the same exact reason as what we're, why we're storing none inside of self.head. And then the other thing we're actually going to be messing around with is we want to actually keep track of the size of our linked list. It's really something that you should really do with any type of data structure like a linked list. Have some sort of size and it really is just going to be like a counter for our linked list. So self self.size underscore equals zero and that's really all that all that there is once we have initialized um, if i can speak correctly once we have initialized those three variables the next one we're actually going to be messing around with is the push front method over here on line 15. the whole purpose of push front is we actually want to add elements to the beginning of our linked list and the way we're going to do that is we have to have a few input arguments mainly these input arguments are going to be everything that our linked list needs in order to operate the price the symbol the current percentage the overall percentage that's everything we have to have as a input argument anything we're storing inside of our linked list all right so once we have all that we're going to create a brand new node where we're going to say temp equals node the class that we were just talking about and we're going to set next equal to self.head self.head in this circumstance we'll get more on this in a couple of seconds but we're talking about the memory address of the beginning of our linked list not what's inside of the linked list but the memory address associated with our linked list all right and in this circumstance we have this set equal to self.head we're gonna be changing this around in a couple of seconds but once we have our next associated with our linked list we're gonna say price equals price and um, current percentage equals current percentage, overall percentage equals overall percentage, and symbol equals symbol. Now we get into where we're going to change the memory address from temp to self.head so we can call it later on in our code. And that's that's what we're doing here. This self.head that we're talking about here is not the same self.head that we're talking about inside of the next, and I mean, that we're setting next equal to inside of the node. What we're talking about here is we're just creating it, essentially you could kind of think as we're moving the memory address of self.head to the beginning of our new linked list, which is associated with this temp, all right? That's really all that's going on is we're working with memory addresses. The next thing we're going to be messing around with is we actually, since we added to our linked list, we now have to, well, we just have to increase the size by one. So self.size plus equals one, just really because it's a counter. The fun part, and this is really just because we're creating a singly linked list. We're going to say if self.size um, 
is equal to one, we're gonna say self dot tail equals self dot head. The reason being is because we want to link the head and the tail together. And in order to do that, if there's no associated data that's combining these two memory addresses or these two variables, we're not gonna be able to call. We're not gonna be able to call them essentially. And so that's really all that's going on right here. And the next thing we're actually gonna be working with is this pushback method right here on line 23. Now we're gonna have the same input arguments as what we had for push front. The only difference is the meat inside of this code, well, inside of this method, which is just going to say, we're gonna say self.tails.next. So the memory address of self.tail.next, we're gonna set it equal to the new node of this. Same input arguments as before. The only difference is we're not gonna, we're gonna exclude the next input argument. The reason being is because of what's going on in line 26, we're gonna say self.tail equals self.tails.next. So what we're doing here is now self.tail becomes the new tail of the node and the old tail now becomes self.tail's new net. I mean the new tail's next. It's kind of confusing. Again, leave, go ahead and leave questions down below. But next thing we're going to actually be talking about is something that you, you normally do not see when you're working with linked lists. But I personally enjoy having this method inside of all my linked lists really just because of how really versatile this method is. And this method I keep talking so highly about is actually this dynamic method. It's not a very typical, like if your professor was to show all of you how to create a linked list, they would probably not have a method like this within their class. Really just because it doesn't really, it's not really something that you would normally use within a linked list, but I consider it kind of my safety net. And that is really just because when I call dynamic, I have an algorithm that's able to tell if I've already had something imported into my linked list or not. So if the self.size is equal to zero, meaning there is nothing inside of my linked list, the self.head still none, the self.tail is still none, we're actually going to call self.push. And there, I mean push front, and therefore we're going to get a brand new method added to the very beginning of our linked list. If the size is greater than zero, meaning it's not zero, we're actually going to be calling push dot, well, push back. And that's so that everything else is getting added to the end of a list. Again, this is kind of like a safety net for me. I personally enjoy having this method within my linked list. Next thing we're actually going to be talking about print values method right here on line 34. Now, when you're creating a linked list or any data structure like a linked list, it's a very good idea to have some sort of output so that you can see what's going on within your data structure. In our circumstance, how we're gonna be able to see the output arguments of our linked list is we have to set some sort of temporary value to the beginning of our linked list. Because as we're conti continuing on through our linked list or going through the values, if we were used, if we were to use our original variable associated with that memory address, we would lose all of our data. So to get around this, we create this temporary value that's set equal to the same memory address as the beginning of our linked list. And that's what we're doing right here on line 35. The next thing, remember how I said earlier on, it's going to be very beneficial to have your next equal to none because when we do do that, we can actually use a while loop to be able to go through our linked list. So while temp is not none, print out the values of the symbol that's associated with the temp, the price, the current percentage, and the overall percentage. And then to iterate to the next um, value or well, the next node, we're going to say temp equals temp dot next. Therefore, allowing us to have be able to test the value like this, where we're going to have one circumstance, well, one instance of it, we're going to say data equals length list, and then we're going to say data dot push front one, two, three, four, three, five, six. I really did not notice that I went one, two, three, four, five, six, but that's going to be the first time we actually add something to our length list. Once we do that, we're going to print out those values, and then we're going to then we're going to again add to the back. We're going to say data dot push back. And then this time when we say print values, we're going to get from the beginning of a linked list all the way to the end. So it's going to go through the linked list another time. And then when we say push back again, just, just so that you can all see another way. Actually, why don't we just change this to dynamic really quickly. And then once we call it dynamic again, like all the others before, it's going to go from the beginning of the linked list all the way to the end of the linked list, giving an output that looks a lot like this. What, one, two, three, four, five, six, the new list, the new linked list is right here. What, one, two, will, one, two, and then we're going to again go through the linked list, adding to the beginning or the end of it, 
what one two three four will four three two six five four three six you seven two six three five two five if you want to play around this code, go ahead and check it out in the description down below. There should be a link to it. As well as join me in the second part of this video where we'll be going over more in-depth concepts for linked lists. So that way when you walk into that coding interview, you can knock, the, knock their socks off. So if you're not yet subscribed, please go right ahead and hit that subscription button as well as that bell icon so you can get notified when I post my next video. If you enjoyed today's video, please go right on ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you have any questions, go right on ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. I really do suggest, well, I recommend all of you to go on, go into the description bar down below, click on the link for today's code, and mess around with linked lists. Get yourself a great understanding over the concepts concepts we were talking about in today's video. So that way on Wednesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you can all jump right into that video and learn even more about linked lists. As always, happy coding, and I'll see you all in next video. Bye.